follow along, the best way to do so is to have your Zoom window pulled up on your computer screen. Uh, if you're on the phone, those materials that are referenced during the call will be distributed after. Um, and we're also recording this meeting, so we will make that recording available digitally to everybody as soon as it processes. Um, like Terry has mentioned a couple times, please stay muted throughout the call unless you're directed otherwise by her. Uh, this will minimize background noise and distractions during the meeting. Um, we ask that everybody keeps their camera off as well. I don't think we have anybody that has their camera on currently. Uh, if you are, if you are getting feedback from your phone call, um, we might, Terry might mute you during the call and you will get a notification that lets you know that that has happened. Uh, if you want to contribute, but we can't hear or see you, you might wonder how to do that. Um, for those of you on the computer, if you'll navigate with me to the bottom of the screen, there is a control panel at the bottom, um, starting on the, starting kind of in the middle, there's a chat button. If you click that, it will open up a chat window on your computer screen, and that is where you can let the host know that you have something to say. So I will go ahead and enter an example chat there for everybody. I hope you can see that if you're on your computer. If you're dialed in on your phone, you can indicate that you want to contribute by using the star nine button. And what that does is it raises your hand. Uh, that'll appear on our computers so that we know you have something to contribute to the call. And we will take those questions and comments um, when the time comes. So uh, to kind of keep things organized and when we get to the question and answer portion of the call, uh, we'll go down the chat window in order of receipt of the the questions. Um, some people may have submitted questions prior to this call, so we have uh, plans to go through and answer those as well. And if you, if it's your turn to contribute, um, you will have to then unmute yourself. Again, if you're on your computer screen down on the control bar, you'll see on the far left side there is a mute and unmute button. So that's what you'll click when you're prompted um, by Terry to contribute. If you're on the phone, star six will unmute you. Um, so again, star nine, if you want to raise your hand and you're on the phone to contribute and star six to unmute. And then those of you on the computer screen, the mute and unmute button is on the far left hand side of your control bar at the bottom of your screen. And then the chat window is where um, we ask you to chime in with questions. Um, that's all I have. So um, hope everybody gets a lot out of this meeting. Thanks. Thank you, Julia. Julia is going to tag team with me today, so we'll both be monitoring comments when they come in on the chat. The screen moves really fast, so please bear with us. We'll try to get to everything. Um, I'm going to give a quick communications update for everybody, and then um, Chip and Susie with the um, SBDC are on the phone. Susie's going to give you guys a quick update, and then we'll go from there with Chip updates, followed by a round of question and answers. Um, as most of you know, on Friday, we, Downtown Boulder, relaunched our efforts to help the shopping and dining community. Uh, we have lovethelocal.com, and when you go there, you land on this page, and then when you click into the dining and retail sections, there's a list of everybody for dining who's doing pickup, delivery, curbside, if you sell gift cards, we are directing people directly to your gift card page to purchase your gift cards. Um, same with retail. If you guys are doing virtual shopping or anything else, all of those details are on these landing pages. Um, we know things are changing rapidly. So as you guys have updates or want to edit anything that we're posting, please send an email to Julie, not Julia, but Julie, at downtownboulder.org. You can always copy me as well. We're getting those updates processed in real time as quickly as we can. Um, down here on that lovethelocal.com landing page are all of the non-retail or shopping um, lists of events and attractions, anything else that we're getting in. Um, for people that have asked that are outside of the downtown district, this new platform is tied into our website specifically. So I had a couple of people from the public ask if we could share what all of Boulder's doing. We will do everything to share 
as much community information as possible. I cannot specifically tie in to our website um, to get it listed like this because our website is business improvement district specific. So if anybody from outside of the community wants to know where we have a ton of resources and we're happy to share all of the community resources with everybody. I wanted to remind you about Slack. If you are not on our Slack channel yet, this is a great way for everybody to stay in touch on a really quick basis and we're putting a lot of information out that way. I will continue to send email updates, but um, if you want to get in touch with somebody pretty quick, this is a great communication tool. Anybody who's interested in joining our Slack channel, you need to send an email to cindy at downtownboulder.org, and she will send you an invite and help you get set up. She has some great PDFs that tell you exactly how to set yourself up if you're not familiar with the platform. Um, an email went out on Friday to our entire database encouraging everybody to support you guys however possible. So that was the Love the Local email message. Um, in addition, we're doing a ton of social right now. So um, Julie has been amazing and uh, we've been taking best practices from a lot of other downtown districts and tourism agencies throughout the country to come up with social posts for Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. So if you haven't been following us along, um, please do so. All of these graphics we'll make available to you. So if there's anything that you would like to repurpose, please just let Julie and me know and we will get those over to you. Um, we're really hoping to start a um, trend with hashtag love the local. Um, anything you guys are posting for your own social, please include that hashtag. Um, Julie's doing a great job trying to repost things. If you follow us on Instagram and you look at our um, live feed, there's a lot of what you guys are doing being reposted there. So please keep us in the loop and we'll try to um, get the word out as best we can to everybody else as well. The other thing that we're asking that we're going to be slowly rolling out this week is images. Um, if you guys can share images of your, your employees right now, what they're doing, what they're up to, um, we want to really put faces behind this crisis and share these images with our social channels. So already a lot of you have sent some great pictures in please keep those coming. If you just email them to me, we'll save them in our database and we'll start getting them out. Um, also, if you are downtown and you can take any great shots, we have some of the tulips barely peeking their heads out of the flower beds. Anything that you can share with us as we all work remotely so we can help share with the public would be greatly appreciated. Um, a quick update that came in through a question submitted Right now, all of our 2020 band and event marketing has been put on pause. We are going to be super thoughtful as we move forward and we'll keep you in the loop, but um, we, we just need to take a little bit of a breath and make sure we're very thoughtful of how and when we start encouraging people to come back downtown. So right now, at least for this week, our efforts are all going to be through social. Um, so please stay tuned, we'll update you on our marketing and advertising plan in the weeks and months ahead as we move forward. One other thing to mention, um, Lane with the city sent me an email this morning. Um, there is a bunch of webinars that are set up over the next three days to help anybody interested. The first webinar happens today and it has to do, um, is your business organization prepared to telework? There's one tomorrow that is a live Google Hangouts tutorial. And then on March 25th, a live Zoom tutorial. I just put all of this information on the Slack channel. Again, if you're not um, joining Slack, we'll do a recap email and make sure all of these links are in the recap email. But if you're interested, if you go to the Slack channel now, um, the links to sign up for those webinars are included there. 
Um, Chip, do you want to introduce Susie and turn things over to her at this point? Yeah, that sounds great. Thank you, Terry. Thanks for that great update. I wanted to, I have a, a handful of updates about a number of things, but I, I wanted to first uh, introduce uh, Susie from the Small Business Development Center, uh, was was gracious enough to join us on the call this morning. and and. I want to just really um, stress what an amazing and um, overwhelming job they are doing here locally with the SBDC in working with people and supporting people and getting the um, through the SBA process. Um, and um, Julia, I think if you can find Susie on the list and unmute her, I'm going to uh, introduce her. And I imagine uh, folks have a lot of questions, but. Um, first, I will say uh, we got some great information from the SBDC last night that we posted on the Slack channel uh, with sort of a, a one sheet of some questions and how to be prepared um, in that. And there's, there's some information there on the Slack channel and we can get it out. Um, there's a slide deck and also kind of just high, uh, the letter that they send out to folks when they engage uh, that gives you the here are the, the questions very important things like make sure you keep track of your login and password save at every uh, page of the 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 thing you I, i'm sure you can all imagine how much traffic that site's getting so um susie are you do we have you here oh yeah oh great um so i don't know if, if i'm not seeing specific questions come through on the chat channel but is there any kind of broad general advice you want to uh, give us in terms of how to navigate this this process or just let us know how it's going on your end and what people might want to know. Yeah, you bet. Um, so hi, everybody. I'm uh, Susie Bonson. I'm Assistant Director of the Boulder Small Business Development Center. Um, first of all, I think that what you guys are doing um, with the Downtown Partnership is awesome. I love all the pictures and the community and um, I think you're incredible. Um, so what we're doing is so the SBDC is always done consulting at no cost. We do workshops and trainings and connections to resources. Um, uh, some of you uh, that I know are on the call have already reached out to us. Uh, I just joined the Slack channel. Thanks, Chip. So I am on the uh, downtown um, Boulder Slack channel and I can answer questions through that directly. Um, I'm going to take on making sure that you guys are all um, supported and taken care of during these times, whether you're applying for an EIDL application to get an SBA loan or you have questions about um, different things you can do to, to keep your business going or you need um, other support, all of our consultants are working remotely and we have built a team to support um, helping people with these applications. They're not easy to do. Um, but you know they're loaning up to two million dollars and for some of you that might make sense uh, we're also looking for other opportunities for money um, Sharon King who's the executive director is on a committee with the Small Business Administration and the Office of Economic Development and, and International Trade so she's really um, become, becoming an expert in all of all of these uh, disaster recovery um, uh, efforts. So we're having a webinar tomorrow. I just want to let you know uh, it's no cost again, everything, um, nothing costs. Uh, it's on financial health. It's uh, a panel discussion and we'll talk a little bit about cash flow and um, what bank lenders are looking for, more about the SBA loans, things like that. If you are interested in applying for a loan, uh, what chips sent sense is uh, a great start but if you're like man this is blowing my mind reach out to us uh, you can either slack me and i'll get you in the queue a little quicker um, we're getting a lot of requests obviously but if you let me know i'll um i'll get you in the queue so that we can uh, get started and we can talk you through the process and then when you apply you might just want to apply directly you're like i know my financials i know my story um, so I'm just going to go for it. However, if you're like, I need a second set of eyes. I just want to make sure because really it's going to be the loan officer that reviews your paperwork. That's going to determine whether or not you qualify for this cash. 
So if you want uh, help with that or you want us to look at your application before you submit, again, we're, we're right here for you. So um, yeah, and any other questions too? Um, all of our uh, consultants, by the way, it's confidential. So we don't share information about your businesses with other people. Um, we're all certified consultants and we've expedited the process for other consultants to come on board um, during these times. And uh, that was approved by the state. So that's really great. Um, there was something else I wanted to tell you. Oh, uh, somebody asked about insurance disruption, uh, business disruption insurance. So I'm making some calls today. We're going to, um, there's a nonprofit in Colorado that helps with insurance and we have a contact at another uh, insurance company. So I'm gathering some information on that that we will share across the board. And as we're doing that, we'll obviously share that with, um, you know, with our partners at, uh, with the Downtown Partnership. And if you have questions, just please let me know. Thank you so much, Susie. We did have one quick question. I don't know if you have the answer to this at, at your fingertips. A uh, question about charitable organizations. Yeah. Uh, it looks like there's some uh, lack of clarity. It says charitable organizations are ineligible, but then it has rates for nonprofits. So is there, do you have any clarification about who is eligible in terms of 501 I believe private nonprofits are eligible um, from my understanding. Okay. Um, it was a little bit confusing and I've been on a couple of calls, um, but uh, whoever's asking, if you want to slack me and reach out direct, I'll confirm that. But it's my understanding that private nonprofits are, are, um, are part of this. It was, it was definitely confusing. So. Great. And so if people aren't on, on Slack or don't have the Slack, your, your email is a good way to get you or how? Yeah, you, you can wanted... Slack me, you can email me. Um, and you can, can you repeat your email address really quick for you bet uh, it's suzy s-u-z-i dot bonson b as in boy a as in apple h as in happy n as in nancy <laughs> s as in sam e as in edward and as in nancy so suzy dot bonson at boulder sbdc dot com so small business development center sbdc sorry it's a long email um, Perfect. Yeah. And it's, it's in the chat box for people who are online. Susie, thank you so much for joining yeah. us this morning. And uh, please put your questions for Susie on the Slack channel um, or reach out to her. Um, I know, again, I really appreciate your time, especially considering no, kind of knowing the workload you guys have over there. Um, I know uh, you increased capacity quite a bit and reached out to, to uh, build the team pretty quickly to get some more consultants in. So I know you guys are doing all you can to help through this yeah. craziness. So we really appreciate it. Thanks, Chip. And, you know, we're here for you. So, you know, downtown is important. All the businesses in Boulder are important. And that's what we're, you know, that's what we're here for. So please um, don't hesitate, whatever. If we don't have the answer, we'll look for it. And we have quite a few connections and, and resources outside of, you know, um, outside of our office. So uh, please, that's what we're, we're here for you. Great. Um, thank you so much. Um, yeah. And um, Lane, I'm going to uh, throw to you in a moment, if you're willing to just give us any, any updates you might have. I know things are coming fast and furious and you, you don't have all of the answers from the city, but I'm going to throw to you in just a moment. So um, Julie, if you can look for Lane and unmute him. Uh, in the meantime, really quick updates. I want to let folks know what's happening in, in the downtown in terms of regular operations and, and the presence down there. Uh, first of all, starting with the Downtown Boulder Partnership, uh, our ops crew who's out there every day of the year throughout the year um, has been reduced to a skeleton crew, but we do still have a little bit of a presence. Chris, our ops director, is out uh, every morning driving around in his truck, keeping an eye on, on downtown to see if there's any, uh, you know, big issues. Certainly we're not going to get to everything uh, as we normally would, but Chris is definitely keeping an eye on our, our Peter is down there every day trying to, uh, we're making sure he's being as safe as possible, but also keep an eye on things if, if there are large graffiti uh, pieces or trash that needs to be uh, collected. He's doing that. Also, Steve, our contractor who does the 
zero waste bins um, every day of the year is he, he is out there. Um, he's also being very safe and he has a, a good stock of sanitizer still. So he's increased his, uh, the sanitizing of the zero waste bins, doing that multiple times a day, um, you know, for the time being. And we're really trying to stay on top of the physical uh, built environment downtown and, and trying to keep it uh, clean and, um, and ultimately safe. Um, and to that, um, I've been in conversations with the um, police chief, acting police chief, uh, and you know their patrols. They're they're reducing their trolls to patrols to some extent to protect the police officers and their their risk of transmission. But um, where they are, they are staying on top of downtown as much as they can. They're dr they're driving through. They're you're you're not going to see them out of their cars as much these days. But they are uh, doing their best to stay on top of downtown. And I'm continuing calling the ask that happens. If you see specific areas that you're seeing um, uh, issues arise um, that need that a police presence would be valuable, uh, I encourage you to call it in. The police will come. They they will. Uh, you know, for specific issues or just growing issues in particular neighborhoods, uh, call the police, call the 911 if it's an if it is an emergency or a crime in process. But if you're having issues, reach out to the police. You can call, uh, you can message me, email me, and I can help uh, navigate that. But um, I do encourage you to kind of keep the police down there so we can keep an eye, especially as fewer and fewer people are downtown and and stores are closing it's really going to be important to keep an eye as much as possible to have that police presence. So um, that, that is happening. Um, and I have a little more information about uh, some, of the, some of the questions that were asked restaurants and alcohol sales, um, landlords and a, and a few other things happening on the state and federal level. But um, are you, Lane, are you on and able to give us a little update from what's going on in your world with the city? Do we lose Lane? Chip, I think I'm on live. Is you are. Okay, there we go. <laughs> and Lane, thank you for joining us. For those, I'm sure most of you know Lane Landreth from the city's uh, community vitality department, who is in charge of many things downtown. So, Lane, what what can you tell us about what's going on with your department in the city at large? Well, thank you, Chip, and your team, and Susie at the SBDC. Um, I we are um, <clears throat> working on a document. Um, over the weekend that I know Yvette is taking up to uh, the uh, uh, management team. So it's not fully uh, ready for release, but um, like you've mentioned, we're certainly um, there for our business community and looking at a variety of ways to get information collected and pushed out um, both directly and indirectly. Um, certainly encourage everyone to go to bouldercolorado.gov and there is a large um, red banner at the top that's easily accessible for people to find resources from community to business, um, special events and so on. Um, that said, um, <clears throat> we're obviously working very closely with um, SBDC on microloans and helping keeping uh, businesses afloat. Um, looking for safety nets for nonprofit organizations. Um, obviously, partnering with um, the Downtown Boulder Partnership, the Chamber, Latino Chamber, and others to identify uh, local businesses and steer them in the right direction. Um, let's see, I'm trying to give you some uh, highlights that you have already, already heard. Um, I think it's pretty well known that the Boulder County Farmers Market, both in Boulder and Longmont, have been delayed to May 2nd. So we're exploring ways to um, connect those farmers directly with restaurants and uh, create uh, some sort of meal packs um, and also perhaps Meals on Wheels. Oh, and of course, there's an idea here that's being thrown out to restaurants to be contracted to prepare, prepare meal packages for first responders. And in terms of, of course, long-term economic vitality, we also turn to our partners at the SPDC and then on the national level. 
Um, great information here about working directly with the tourism economy and how important that is to all of us, especially the number of workers who have um, been laid off um, and how we can best do that. Um, I don't know if others did, but I received an email yesterday from the Frosca group saying that they've coordinated um, a uh, advocacy arm for, for restaurants, and I'm blanking right now about the name of it. Um, perhaps somebody in this group knows that. that uh, Lane, Alicia is on the call. Alicia, can you unmute and say the name, please? Yes, Alicia. the Independent Restaurant Coalition um, with Danny Meyer and Will Guidera, uh, Bolts um, Communications, our PR firm, and several others, uh, restaurateurs throughout the country. Thank you. All right. Um, I don't want to uh, take up any more time. If, if there are specific questions, obviously please post them up or let me know. We're happy to respond. And or Chip, Terry, is there anything specific that you would like me to address? Well, all of it, but um, <laughs> thank you. Um, no, I know that you and, and your department are working on a whole lot of things that aren't quite ready for prime time, um, but I know you guys are uh, have a lot in the works and appreciate all, all the work you guys are doing. So um, keep us posted. Lane, um, you are on our Slack channel too and monitoring that. So if questions come up around city issues, you'll, you're, you're keeping an eye on that. Is that true? In truth, it, yep, very much so. Um, learning okay. curve is certainly there. Um, I just wanna make sure that everyone also is aware that um, city non-essential services, so offices, um, that you're used to um, coming to will now be closed through Sunday, April 19th. Um, much of the activity that we do in person can be done via email. You're sure, certainly still welcome to call the numbers, whether it's uh, business tax licensing, parking and access, and we will pick up those calls and return them. And um, also uh, want to note that make sure everyone knows that all five city owned garages, those are the ones with the green circle with the white parking P are free and open to the public all days of the week. And that will be through again, at least uh, Sunday, April 19th, when our current um, order to return to offices is in place. Great, thank you, Lane. And uh, speaking of essential services, maybe I, my segue here, we have a lot of questions about alcohol delivery. Um, I have reached out to Nishan to see if um, we could set up a, a webinar with her. Do you know if she is working? Is she, uh, her autoresponder seems to make me think she might not be. Um, do you know if, if Nishan in the, the liquor office is, or the licensing office is essential or not in these crazy times? I'm, you don't have to know that. I'm sorry, I don't know the answer to that. I will actually. That's fine. I will text her during this call, and maybe we'll have an answer soon. That's great. And um, so, on that, the reason I asked that, and this kind of goes to a lot of the questions we we have had from restaurateurs about um, about uh, you know various specifics about the uh, Colorado Department of Re Revenue's interpretation. Um, and uh, specific questions around the, the new alcohol uh, allowances for deliveries. Um, I, I'll tell you a couple of things. The Colorado um, Restaurant Association is a really great resource. They've been putting out a, quite a bit of information. Um, and I think we've been posting some of that on the Slack channel. And as we get more information, uh, we'll continue to put that up on the restaurant side of the Slack channel. Um, what we have heard from CRA is the Colorado Department of Revenue is interpreting the order very broadly. Uh, so I, I think there's a lot of specific questions about what does this piece mean? What does this piece mean? Um, and they're, you know, they're asking that licensees be responsible 
um, and and they're also interpreting it very broadly. So um, there's a couple of specific questions I'm, that came up that I'm trying to get the answer to, um, and uh, you know what what I'm getting from CRA is you know d do your best, be responsible. You guys all know if you are alcohol purveyors already, if you're serving alcohol, you know how to be responsible. So continue that in terms of sealed containers and delivering to you know people who you're supposed to be delivering and not delivering to others. So um, as we get more specific information, we, we will continue to post it. Um, uh, so I'm uh, looking at some of the other questions. Um, there was a question Zoe put up about boarding windows. I, I don't have any information about uh, that approach if anybody's considering that, what, either um, tenants or, or landlords in terms of boarding up buildings that are closed. Um, I, you know, that might be a conversation for the Slack channel if people have opinions or, or thoughts or information about that. I, um, I, have, not, um, I have not heard any, any talk about that yet. Um, and it's probably something that at some point we want to start to think about in um, terms of just protecting this, the stores. Um, uh, okay, a couple other things. I am, I am, there's, uh, Terry mentioned some of the webinars that the, the work from home webinar that's today. Uh, we're working very closely with the, 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 the chamber, the SBDC and a number of other uh, business partners, business support partners in the county to kind of coordinate our efforts on webinars. Uh, a couple that are in the works later this week, we are putting together, we're working with uh, Insight Designs downtown and Google uh, is working with this, uh, uh, working with us on this. I mentioned something on the, the retail Slack channel about online shopping um, and kind of an online presence, online economy and how, what you can do if you A, don't have an online store or B, want to boost your online store, just get some tips how to increase that. Uh, we're working on that for a Friday morning. We don't have the date, the exact time set, but probably in the, the nine or 10 o'clock in the morning uh, time zone. And if you have specific questions or things you would like to see covered in that, webinar, please put them on the, the Slack channel. And if you have other thoughts of things you're looking for, to get information on that we can help put together a webinar with our partners, uh, also put that on the, the web channel. I've reached out to the Employers Council uh, of Colorado who has great resources, uh, legal resources around um, employment law and employment policies. Uh, in the hopes that they can help us with a, you know, I'm sure there are, I've seen a lot of questions and I'm sure all of you have questions about how to address some of the employment issues that are coming up around sick leave, around um, downsizing, et cetera, all the things that we're needing to do. Um, so uh, hopefully we'll put together a, a, a webinar with them as well. Um, I'm slightly distracted. I'm trying to keep up with the questions. Um, uh, as far as I, 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 everything I'm hearing from the state is that the governor is not um, considering a shelter in place. Um, I know yesterday he made an announcement of, of reducing non-essential businesses to half capacity, uh, trying to reduce the number of people in the stores. Uh, there was some pushback on that, so, but I don't, I don't expect from everything I've heard so far and everything changes so quickly. I don't expect a, a statewide shelter in place, uh, though that may change. Um, hey, Chip. Yeah. Chip, this is Terry. Why don't I'm going to read some questions to you so you can concentrate, so you don't have to keep flipping through. Julia and I will stay on top of that, so you don't feel rushed. Great. Thank you. Um, sure. Me... A, a really quick question for yeah. any restaurant people who are listening, and if you want to just respond via chat. Um, Sushi Zanmai is just curious on how delivery and take um, pickup sales are going and how many people um, you've been seeing on a nightly basis and if it's worth it. So if you guys could um, restaurant people respond with some thoughts in chat, that would be great. 
So uh, another question that has come up a lot that I will I will try to address is the question of rents, uh, deferred rents or, or reduced rents, and a policy around that. The mayor and um, council member Mayor Weaver and council member Yates uh, met with a number of brokers and landlords uh, last week and uh, kind of reported back from that meeting. Um, I'll, I'll tell you generally. And I've had some conversations with some of our property owners downtown. I've sent some emails and, and what I have heard back both from the, the mayor and, and Bob and their conversation and uh, the, in the conversations I've had is that obviously none of the landlords are interested in losing tenants right now. Nobody's looking to do any kind of evictions and um, everyone's really hesitant to make any kind of statement about what they're willing to do for rent. There are some tenants who are not going to be impacted, who are going to be able to, to pay their rent. So certainly landlords are not going to say we're giving everybody a break when some people don't need a break. Um, what I'm hearing is every, all, the landlords are all wanting to deal with it on a case by case basis. Um, and the primary focus is that individual relationship. So uh, evictions are not happening. Um, there's not a, a moratorium on evictions, but there are no state resources to to provide evictions. And what you know, there's evictions are very very rare. Um, in in and I don't anticipate you know there's not a lot of tenants knocking down the doors to try to rent property. So it behooves the property owners to work with their tenants uh, and however they can. So I. And um, as you all know, you know, very different property owners are going to be in a very different place to to provide some support and resources. Some have, you know, they they have smaller margins than others. So, I I encourage you to reach out however you can to your individual property owners and have that conversation. Uh, uh, there's you know there's a lot of other things the city is working with property owners on and lenders as well uh, working with closely with the chamber and the city on on those conversations uh, but generally what I, what we're getting is it's you know it's there's flexibility and it's case by case uh, one of the things that that is challenging is property owners aren't eligible generally for SBA funds and a lot of other funds that tenants are so trying to figure out uh, as landlords are impacted and some of them will have some significant impacts, where can the city support the landlord, landowners who do need support in this time? Uh, so it's, it's, a, it's fairly nuanced and very specific. So I know that probably is not the, the answer everybody's hoping for, but it, it really is gonna be an individual case by case. We're continuing to have conversations right. with the property owners as well in terms of how we can be supportive in that, that conversation. Lane, can you unmute for a second? We have a question about um, monthly parking. Has there been any talk of um, suspending monthly parking permit payments or anything of that nature? It was discussed <clears throat> last week at our economic vitality meeting, and that is something that our team is looking into. Um, keeping in mind, I know this is awkward, but um, we have debt payments um, through CAGED, which is the General Improvement District. So we're working with our um, legal team and our finance team to find out what options we are allowed to, uh, to put out there. Okay, great. We'll, we'll update, if you update us, we'll let everybody know any details as they're released. Yes, thank you. Um, Russ, you had another question, and I think it goes along with Chip needing to get a hold of uh, Michonne about sufficient food uh, for alcohol sales. Um, we don't have the answer to that, so we will work with Lane and trying to get a hold of people who could answer that question. So any questions that we don't know the answer to that are coming up on the chat, we are going to screenshot all of the questions and do our best to get answers and respond to you guys accordingly. So I did just get an email back from Michonne Cook. So um, it looks like um, they're trying to get more information from the state and um, she and I will work together to set up a, a a call that we can have specifically uh, around uh, alcohol 
uh, questions and I'll call it delivery. So if, if folks have, if uh, folks who do have questions about that want to specifically put their questions on the Slack channel or email me and then we can compile them for Michonne and, and we can have a set up a call hopefully later this week that we can, um, in the next couple of days that we can just get her to answer them as best as she can. It sounds like um, they have as many questions as we do for this date. They're, they're trying to, um, yeah, they're trying to get some more answers from the state. So I will, I will keep you posted on that. But if you do have specific questions, please um, let us know through the Slack channel so we can filter those to Nishan. Chip, I can address that um, a, a, slightly um, from in terms of special event, temporary liquor license permits. Um, it is required with your alcohol service that you have light snacks such as sandwiches, um, and that is left um, kind of in a broad perspective. I know that, um, I think it was Russ who was mentioning a bag of pretzels. Um, again, that's, uh, that's, it's kind of a gray area, but light snacks is the way it's defined. Um, another question came up on um, security and Klein. If you want to unmute for just a second, if you have a specific question uh, as a follow up, go ahead and ask that. I'm sorry, what were you sp about charity? Security. Oh, security. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, no, I just, you know, us being following up on Zoe's um, chat. And I think someone else asked that as well. Um, you know, we've just at times were high end art gallery. So just if we're not down there, just making sure that our business is secure. And I know that you said police officers are patrolling around the area. Um, and I guess it just is unnerving a little bit if we're not down there and there's a lot of other businesses closed, just the overall security of downtown Boulder. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that, that's a really good question. And I think it's, it's, uh, it, it's going to be a difficult um, question to answer. I, th I think absolutely everybody needs to figure out how to protect their property and protect their stores. Um, I think no, none of us ideally want a downtown that's boarded up anytime, uh, but these are, are strange times. So one of the things, Chris, Chris, our operations team and I are kind of doing some research on best practices and hearing what other downtowns are doing and in terms of, of safety, you know, and recommendations for stores. So um, I don't, I don't have a good answer for that, but I, I, I will dig deeper into that and see, w you know, what recommendations they are. At the end of the day, you all have to protect your own, your property. So um, we can figure out the best, best way to do that collectively. And, and that, you know, is going to be sustainable through this. Great. Thank you. There was a question also about, um, non-essential work and relating to some maintenance work while businesses are closed to get the stores ready. Um, Andy, I put this on the Slack channel, but it kind of gives more bullet points of critical essential services. I don't know that it addresses that specifically. In listening to the governor speak yesterday, um, it sounded like just minimal staff in workplace businesses who are safely able to maintain six feet of distance is what he strongly recommends and encourages. Chip, do you have any more thoughts on maintenance work inside stores while they're closed? I, not, not more than what you just said. I think, I, you know, I, I think the, the, the nature of the closure is, is to protect people and keep people isolated. So if you are going to work in your store, if you have, you know, I would, I would recommend, you know, making sure you are, you and your staff are protected and you stay just the appropriate distance from everybody, keep everything sanitized. So I, I would, you know, just be careful. I mean, we, we have to, you know, try to get through this, but the first and foremost, we have to be careful as a community and, and, you know, end this and the only way we're going to do that is that the isolation so i'd be i'd be really careful about 
you know, if you are going to do work in your store, do it, do it carefully and thoughtfully. Um, we had another question, and you might have touched on this, but is the city or county working on reducing commercial property taxes for the short term? You know, I, I, it, that's a hard uh, one to answer. I am actually having a, a meeting after this with the, um, with the, the chamber and, the, and, the, and Kimberly from downtown Longmont and the chamber in Longmont to kind of strategize around that. There's uh, uh, the, ultimately, I don't know that we're gonna get much reduction in, in tax. I think we may get a deferment and payment of tax. That's what we're pushing for. The challenging thing with the property tax, it goes to so many different uh, sources between the schools and the RTD and, and you know a number of places. So it's gonna be hard to get anything reduced, but we are absolutely pushing for whatever kind of relief, even if it is just delaying in, in payments um, or, or deferring payments till later. Um, we're having those conversations and, and I wish I, I was more optimistic about that, but I, I think um, the property tax is really, really uh, a tricky thing. But some some states are doing it, and I think there is precedent, and I think we can we can certainly advocate for that uh, wherever we can. So, and and like I said, my next meeting is about that very issue. Um, Chip, I know that there has been several questions that have come on in terms of hotel occupancy, and I think you might have just gotten an update to share. I did just get. Um, an update from uh, Amber the Boulderado. Um, and this is not necessarily. Um, this is one one um, data point. Um, and Amber says their occupancy for this week is around twenty percent. Last week's occupancy ended at twenty two percent. So we are working with um, the Boulder Convention and Visitors Bureau, who put out a survey to hotels in Boulder and. We are just waiting for the results of the survey to come in and that information will be shared with all of you as well. Right, um, really quickly, I'll also kind of get, because I, I haven't yet had it given an update on, on what the feds are doing. We're working very closely with Congress Member Nagus's office. Um, what I can tell you, um, um, in case you don't know, Washington's very dysfunctional, um, but there it's, uh, we can expect a, a very large stimulus package to come. What that stimulus package is going to be, um, you know, anybody's guess at this point. The the Democrats are generally uh, in a fairly good position to be fighting for a lot of that stimulus going to uh, small businesses, to families, to working folks. Uh, and so that's where they're pushing, but they're looking at kind of the largest stimulus package yet. Uh, whatever it is won't be enough. Uh, they're also looking at um, right now, uh, for the first time in the history of America, figuring out how the legislature can vote remotely. Um, that's never happened. So changing, changing that will be um, challenging and I'm sure there'll be a lot of um, petty fights over how to make that happen. Uh, but that's something that's gonna probably slow down the process because they're not going to be going to DC to vote. They're not going to the, the chamber to vote. So they're going to try to figure that out, which is a little bit crazy to think about. But but it looks like we will be getting some stimulus package from the feds when that comes and where that goes to is, is anybody's guess. Um, the Congress member's office is optimistic though. So. Does anybody else have any questions or would anyone else like to make any comments? If so, um, please just uh, let us know. If you are on the phone, if you star nine, that will raise your hand to let us know that you have something that you'd like to say, and then you can star six to unmute. So please let us know if there's anything else you guys would like to talk about. Lane just posted a link. Save Restaurants, Independent Restaurants Coalition website is save restaurants.co. Anybody else have any questions or would like a chance to say anything?
I will also just Julia, say, please keep on, sorry. Oh, go ahead, Julia. I'm looking, I don't see anybody. Let me know if I'm, okay, thank you. I'll just say, please do keep touch on the Slack channel. Um, we're trying to get answers to all these questions as, as accurately and quickly as possible. So uh, as more questions come up, put them on the Slack channel or email any of us with the, the partnership and um, let us know if there are bigger topics like employment or other things you'd like to talk about, we can set up a specific call around certain things for the people who are interested. Um, and uh, we'll, we'll continue to do our best to keep you all informed of everything as it, as it changes day by day. Um, and I'm, you know, I really encourage, I've been heartened and encouraged by how much you all are staying connected. And I really think that that's how we're gonna get through this. So appreciating all of you. Um, and appreciating Terry and Julia for, for doing these every week and thanks for putting this together. Um, and are there, did we get more questions in? I think we're good. Any last, last call, anybody? Okay, we'll stay in touch this week and let us know if there's anything we can do to help you. Thanks everybody. Thank you everyone.